One of the best techniques to stay under the radar and evade signature detection is called staging. Staging, as the name suggests, meaning that I'm gonna host a file on my remote server. Of course, this file can be hosted via various techniques, but in that case, I'm using Python simple HTTPS server. And then after that link is being hosted, which is in our case, the raw shellcodes being loaded, I can dynamically load it into a memory using my pre-compiled C++ binary. So after the after the execution, we can see how much bytes are being written. And if I go back to the copy, we can see that a successful request to the shellcode is being made. Now, when it comes to payloads, a lot of C2 frameworks are having their own unique payload generation. So for instance, Metasploit is using MSF Venom for generating the payload. And most of the cases, the, the payload generated framework can support both stage and stageless. So to explain that better, let's observe the output I have from MSF Venom. And here we have a bunch of payloads, right? We are looking just in the interpreter, but they were quite the same based on the stage versus stages. Now here we can observe two payloads. The first one is being Windows X64 interpreter reverse TCP. And then we have one more which looks kind of the same. Windows X64 interpreter reverse TCP. Now if we pay close attention we can see that the payloads are pretty much the same but only one character is different. Meaning that here it's a slash and here it's an underscore. Now what that means if it's an underscore, it's meaning that it's stageless, meaning that the payload that's going to be generated contains the full body, the full code that's needed for the C2 to run, right? But when we have the staged one, so slash means staged, we force the Metasploit to host uh, the full version of the payload, or I can say the remaining version of the payload, we send just a small piece that's gonna call back to our Metasploit server and the Metasploit is gonna re-download the rest of the payload and then execute. Now you may ask, why do we need to call that thing by ourselves if they are already written for us? Well, that's the point because this is heavily signatured. I'm not sure that if there is a single AV which do not trigger the Metasploit stage, so I was forced to make my own. So let's get right into it. The API I choose for staging is called WinHttp. This is the native Windows API used to perform what's so called web requests. Now, while the, that's wrapped up via languages like C Sharp and Java and Python, it's been so easily performed with them. As you can see, the code with C and C++ is kind of bigger, but I use that template as my template for the stager and the code is available on my offensive C++ GitHub, when you go to the main page, you go to WinAPI examples and then you have WinHTTP. Now, that's the shellcode downloader and as you can see the code is quite the same. So, let's move that into Commander, combine that with file map so we can execute the shellcode and explain how that really works. I am on my Commander and now let's explain how the code works. Of course, first we're gonna, we're gonna need to define our include statements, meaning what library we're gonna use. In that case, I'm using the standard C library for input output as well as the C. Of course, that can be summarized in any factor, but guys, I am working as you do. Just make sure to edit if you don't like something, that's why it's open source. Then we define the pragma contents, which are meaning from what DLLs we're gonna get which library. So, for instance, here we are defining win, win HTTP library, the one we're going to use for performing web requests. And then we specify that we're going to use that from here and the rest of it from here and so on. The, of course, that can be done via manually adding the references to, through the project's uh, file sample. But I think that way is easier. All right. So next we need to define the buffer. Now, in that case, we need to take into consideration how much big of a buffer we have. For instance, if I go to my uh, Kali machine and see my buffer size, we can see that it's been down from Mythic and the default buffer size is 1 million and something, right? We need to copy that and place it here and increment it by one. Why by one? Because sometimes it's erroring out and it cannot really fully copy or if the last byte is a uh, it's a bad one, it cannot really fully copy the shellcode. So it's always a good practice to have one more byte, which is not gonna waste that much memory, but it helps with fail saving. Now, then we define our download method. So if you pay close attention, we have the download method and we call it here. 
And then the rest of the code is as the same as my previous shellcode execution video, which is using a file map shared object for executing the shellcode. If you haven't watched the video, make sure to find it in the description of that one. Now today we're gonna focus only on that one. I'm not gonna go into that many details of how that thing is working, but just the custom download function. Now, as I said, that is through the template of the Microsoft documentation, but in a nutshell, we need to first define the class, the class variables, meaning properties. We need to allocate them and work with them, right? Now, of course, in the languages like Python, Java, C Sharp, this class is being wrapped up and is being used so easily, for instance, one, two, three, four lines of code. But in that case, it's a lot, so we need to define things a little bit more. Now, the first thing we define is a counter we're gonna use later. Then we define some variables needed for the HTTP class to operate. We have some size downloaded flag, meaning that if we have something downloaded, that's going to be one and we're going to stop downloading. We have the buffer, which we can allocate the temporary bytes of data, more of that later. Then we have some kind of result and sessions, right? Now here we defined the first session, which is being opening an HTTP connection. We're going to specify our user agent here and some flags we need for that session to be opened. Of course, we define, we check if the session has been successfully open and if it is, we move on. Now, in that case, we define flags. This is huge because during the demo you're going to see, I'm using what's so-called self-signed certificates, certificates that I created and I signed. And by definition, they are not being accepted. So that's the simula simulating if you navigate to a similar web browser or page via the web browser you need to go advanced and accept the certificate right that's the same thing we accept the certificate with the code by using these flags here they are super important the next step we do is actually define where and what our request would look like in that case we're gonna do open http request we're gonna use the session we have previously and then we're gonna specify the method we're gonna use the file path we're gonna use, the HTTP version, and additionally, some flags for connecting over SSL. Nice. Of course, we, che we check if that's the case and if we can successfully open a connection. If that's the case, we continue. If not, we exit. Now, so far, up until that point, up until that point, we are just defining some kind of simple variables and try to open session. Now here we send the very, the very simple single initial request. Now this is important because based on that we can either choose what to work upon and if not. So in that case we send the request of course again check if that's successful or not and if this we move on. And now here is the magic. Now if we have a result meaning that our request is being successful and that result is just a flag saying that if the request being successful or not if that's the case we enter in one huge do while whoop what that do while whoop is doing and while it's whooping is until the dw size is bigger than zero how that can be bigger than zero well pretty much from the first statement meaning that do we have more data available for reading if that's the case then the dw size is gonna get to one and then boom we have exit in the loop. That's the meaning of that statement here and that API call with HTTP query data available, right? But if it's not, so we have more data to read, we define a buffer. That buffer we define to be the size of the DW size plus one. So meaning one in that case. And then of course we perform some kind of check and now we start to read the data. Now here we zero out the memory of the buffer. We read the data from the request into the buffer and to from the, uh, using the buffer from that downloaded size here. Now that is again zero, but it's gonna be constantly initiated during the loop. Again, we have some check for data corruption and something going on against the network. If that's not the case, we just move on. And now here is where the magic comes from. So if all the checks from here are successful, we enter this L statement here. Now this L statement is using one additional while loop for that and what that while loop is doing is utilizing the counter we defined just in the beginning here 
now what that counter is do is gonna count the size of bytes we currently allocated and you may ask why and i can answer because the 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 most bytes we can allocate or read via one single request is being no more than 1192 bytes this one here so for instance if you have a shell code that's been like 1000 bytes you can read it on one tick so you don't need to iterate over anything but in case you have a bigger shell code for instance our is like a million or something we need to be careful with that and we need to whoop and download 8000 bytes 8000 bytes 8000 bytes until we reach the end of the array now that's the point here that's the point of these if statements it's gonna see if our counter is bigger than the size of the buffer and then it's gonna terminate the whoop but if that's not the case meaning that we have still to download we're gonna mem copy meaning then meaning that we're gonna copy the bytes from the downloaded buffer into our defined buffer designed for the shell code in that case i'm using size of char because it's really one byte you can use byte here it should not make a difference but i use char right i have simple debug statement we're going to use later on to see visually what's been downloaded and some kind of stats about the counter the buffers and so on but but forget about that for now then we just increment the counter and increment the i all right now that's the whole point here i is being resetted here it's been incremented here and it's been whooped while it's less than the w size so we are pretty much what we're doing is we are allocating one character at a time on the array so we download one character at a time and fulfilling the our shell code array right now we free the memory so we can continue with the whooping and we start all over again i know that can sound a little bit complicated guys but trust me it's not that bad so in order to prove that i'm gonna Get, uh, uncomment that uh, debug statement i'm gonna recompile make sure my web server is up and running which is not and here what happened now oh yeah it's still under execution and now if i run the binary we can see the Current, the current version of i so what number is there the dw the size which is one one eight one nine two which is the highest possible bytes we can read from one request then we have the counter then we have what character is being read and what character is being written so we can see they're quite the same nice so with that being said that's our our stage function as you can call it we whoop through these whoops until we have any more data to read. That worked with a lot of payloads like Sewer, Metasploit, uh, Mythic. So, so far I didn't see any C2 framework that is not supported or have some kind of problems with that stager. Right. Now that's all about the DL function. As I said, this is from the, our previous video, the very same code. But in a nutshell, what that is doing is just doing uh, creating a shared file object which is called file map and that file map can be a shared ob object between multiple process threads and so on but that's way too deep not gonna dive into that deep uh, data here but apparently that's a way for our shell code to get executed so the first way here the first thing we do is just downloading the shell code remotely by whooping until we have data to read and on the second part we just execute it via file map now let's set up everything up and showcase how that really works. In my case, I have Mythic C2. I'm a huge fan of Mythic and I'm going to continue using Mythic. So I set up to using HTTPS connection that is being performed simple. If you go over Mythic C2, C2 profiles, HTTP C2 code, we can see a file called config.json. Now if I cut that config.json, feel free to copy my config file guys we just need to define the port here and we define the keypad and the self pad now just uh, perform or create a open sl self-signing certificate using the key and you're good to go right if you encounter some kind of error remove key that the original key.pem with k.pem and the, the mythic is gonna create its own key file 
right if you if you encounter any error or just hit me up on discord i can troubleshoot with that now after that has been done and restarted we have a mythic city running if you don't know how to install mythic or this type of agents i have a video about that as well make sure to find it in the description of that video and now i can generate a shell code over payloads i can go action generate new payload windows next apple and specify the shell code that's super important then go next specify all the commands we're gonna need now next specify the http make sure to type your ip address correctly so 12168741134 make sure to specify the port so 443 and that's about it click next and just rename that to bin after that's been done i've already did that and there is my payload that's where it came from now on the server side i can generate another self-signed certificate with that command of course you can look up in google and find alternatives or use the same command i don't have problem with that and then just cause that using python HTTPS server of course the code can be again found online i i didn't know that code it's not mine i just used it's open source the magic of the open source now run that and this is gonna start the python HTTPS server with self-signed certificate now of course if we browse it so I'm going to open a Firefox and do 134, I believe. Or, yeah, it's, it's 34, but I need to specify 8443 for that. Now I need to accept the certificate, and that's why it's self-signed. It's a risk, and of course, if you do a real kind of stuff, better use a real signed certificate for that. But as you can see, the file is there. So let's run the code and see how it works. But before that, I'm going to remove that debug statement because it generates way too much output so compile that run it we can see how many bytes have been written to the memory so that many have been allocated and written to the memory then via using shared object called file map we just execute the shell code we download it now if i go to my kali machine we can see it successfully gets the enc.pin file and if i open the mythic c2 go to active callbacks there we are our c2 is working just fine let's do a simple command and let's do help and let's try for instance something very very simple let's do ps just to verify it works all right there we are these are the processes we have on the machine so that's how the staging works in a nutshell now let's get to the fun part and test it over some anti scammy vendors so let's open up the command again go to anti scan me let's hope the api works now now go to desktop now offensive c plus plus navigate to the binary upload that and we can expect really super low detection rate because there is no shell code available on the binary itself now a huge disclaimer even though we see zero here that do not really mean that we have no detection at all but that means that we have no signature detection at all which by itself is super huge and super success so uh stay tuned for more join my discord to share knowledge and experience and have fun guys